everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're going to give everyone just a minute to continue to trickle in. Uh, while that happens, uh, I'd just like to say that uh, this session is planned for 30 minutes. Uh, we, we might go over if we're really excited in what we're, we're involved with, but uh, we will be recording this. Um, uh, so again, we are recording this, so uh, please be comfortable with that. Uh, when you first come in, you will likely be muted and your video will be turned off when you come in. Feel free to turn your video back on and definitely unmute yourself when you want to ask a question or, or engage with us. Okay. Uh, oh, if you do have a question, you're not sure if it's a good time to jump in, uh, feel free to put the question in chat or you know, wave your hand and we should be able to see you as well. Okay. Uh, I think that's an extra minute. So why don't we get started? Uh, my name is Jason Koo, a developer advocate here at Sendbird. And if you don't know what Sendbird is, we are the world's number one chat API. And we power in-app chat inter uh, interactions between 130 million people uh, or more a day uh, in apps such as Reddit, Yahoo, Fantasy Sports, uh, Paydom, Carousel, Pet BNB, and many, many more. And today I'm joined by two talented guests from Velos Mobile, Zach White and David Rajan. And David is an iOS developer, uh, and we met uh, a few months ago now. Uh, after I learned, after I read his article about Sendbird Combine, which is what we will talk about and go into detail today. Uh, but before I let uh, David jump into, into that, uh, I want to also introduce Zach. Zach is a co-founder at Velos and is the, the Apple platforms developer. Is that correct? Yeah. So anything Apple, iOS, tvOS, watchOS, everything. Nice. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so a little thing that we like to do at Code Cafe, since, you know, it's the, our namesake is kind of showcase what everyone is drinking. Uh, so if you guys could turn your camera on and uh, if you're able to show what you're drinking without tipping it onto your laptop or keyboard, that would be fantastic. Um, and unmute yourself if you have a very unusual drink. Because what I'm kind of looking for is I'm looking for like the most exotic drink that we have here today, which is probably not my drink. Um, I've got a, just a shake. Uh, so uh, Jess, why don't we start with you since your your drink is very, very colorful. <laughs> very colorful. Um, I am drinking a fresh squeezed beet, pineapple, carrot, and celery juice, which is delicious. Had it delivered this morning and it's a uh, yeah, good way to start your day. Nice. That looks super healthy. Uh, Zach, David, what, what are you guys drinking today? Sure. Yeah, I'm drinking the uh, Trader Joe's coffee concentrate. Uh, definitely not exotic but uh, it's my go-to every morning. Cool. Okay. I'm, well, I'm a little boring today. I just got good old water, but hey, got to stay hydrated and uh, got the school spirit with our, my Velos flask here. Nice, excellent. Uh, Maria, it's nice, it's good to see you. Uh, what, uh, what are you drinking today? Hi there, just classic uh, tea and that's it. <laughs> so, <laughs> nothing interesting over here. <laughs> Ah, okay. Well, still, no, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Cool. Okay. Uh, Zach, uh, could you, could you tell everyone here a little more about Velos and what you guys do, uh, how, how Velos started? Sure. Yeah. We started about 10 years ago now. Uh, so very early on in, in mobile, uh, but with a focus on, on mobile development, native mobile development, um, both on the iOS platforms uh, and on Android too. Uh, and because of how the industry kept ballooning out out from mobile development. We've definitely kept up with it and, and done more than just iOS and Android. We're doing Android TV and Google TV and uh, Android Wear, watchOS, uh, tvOS, um, basically all of the platforms on both Google's Android platform and, and iOS. Um, so yeah, done a lot of amazing apps. Uh, over the years, kind of doing some multimedia apps, kind of started in that that space, uh, also into healthcare, wellness, uh, those those kind of applications as well, uh, and even even some e-commerce. Nice, very cool. Have you guys dabbled in any of the cross platforms uh, technologies yet? We have, yeah. We've we've done some internal experiments uh, and made sure we're you know kept we've kept up to speed on on React Native and Flutter. Um, and have had some, you know, successes with with small scale uh, things, but mostly we we try to to maintain a, a suggest native native development. Okay, cool, awesome. All right, uh, I think we're ready to get into it. Uh, David, you want to uh, uh, explain to us what Sandbird Combine is and and what the uh, what the problem space it, it solves? 
Yeah. So, um, so kind of as a quick background, uh, everyone knows Taylor Tinbird is, I assume, but Combine, uh, if you're not familiar, it's one of the newer reactor frameworks that Apple has put out. And the way we got into this was um, we were working with some clients, we we're integrating Tinbird into their apps. And we realized um, that, you know, it's, it's kind of a little clunky to, you know, do some of these asynchronous operations. Um, so we kind of started looking into RX Swift and we started integrating uh, Sunbird with RX Swift. And what RX does is that you have a bunch of like publishers and subscribers. And I mean, it's a very brief high level view, but your publishers emit events and your subscribers subscribe to events. So instead of having like a whole bunch of nested things, like you have like a login and then you like check if your login succeeded, if not, you have an error. And then if your login succeeded, then you do another thing where you maybe open a group channel. And then once you do the channel, you once again, check for, check for errors. And if that doesn't work, then you, then you can actually go in and like retrieve the messages and like, or send a new message or do things and just kind of get stuck with this like ugly pyramid of doom of code, or you have a whole bunch of like callbacks and closures and just brackets within more brackets. And, and it's just kind of, you know, not the funnest thing to deal with. So with Rx, uh, you just kind of get this neat way of like consolidating your code. You kind of get all the, you know, um, all the interactions kind of bundled together in one place where you, and all the error checking is kind of built in. So we started with Rx and once Apple uh, announced combined, we're like, well, let's try the native Apple method of doing this. So I can show you like a very, brief example here. Let me just share my screen. So um, so here we have like just this uh, kind of co a basic code of like what you would do if you were opening a new channel in Sendbird. So you would like open this channel URL, then you would uh, have some error, error codes here, and then you could Get all the metadata and you want all these things to happen kind of all at the same time and then once it's all done you have some code at the bottom that does this so any one of these places could be like a point of failure and then if one thing doesn't work then the other things kind of cascade and they don't work either so if we do it with combine we get something a lot more simple we can just get our url uh we get our channel that we that we get from our url we enter that we get all the metadata and then at the end of that, this completion just says, okay, if we fail, do this. If we finish, then do something else. And um, everything's just right there all in one place. And you have some other examples too, like you can, uh, you know, basic things in Sendbird, like sending a message, uh, connecting, all of that we have in combined. So what we did was basically we took uh, what Send the Sendbird SDK gives us and we, and we kind of converted all those uh, callback, delegate callback type of functions into publishers. And so what you can do as a developer is you can take all these publishers and subscribe to them, and you will also get this nicer, easier uh, way of doing Sendbird. And so um, I'm gonna hand it over to Zach and Zach can give you a much more detailed example of what this would look like in a real world, real world situation. Thanks. Thank you, David. Cool. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so I can show off uh, the example that we're including with Sinbird Combine. Um, it, let me just show kind of what it what it does first or, or some basic operations of it, and then we can dig into how it's accomplished and, and some of the kind of cool, um, you know, thing, cool integrations that, that Sinbird Combine allows. Um, so here, this is very basic chat application. Uh, you can't even chat in this chat application. It's just a list of, of your channels, essentially. Um, but I can create a new channel. Um, and right now, I just have this set up between two hard-coded um, hard -coded groups here. Um, so if I start typing, you can see a typing indicator start happens on, on our example on the left-hand side here. Uh, on the right hand side, we're just using the, the Sendbird uh, example. Um, if I uh, send a message, then you see the message pop in underneath the, the group channel, you know, as the, as the last message uh, in the group channel. So very basic things, but uh, we kind of dig into how that's accomplished with, with Sendbird combined. 
Um, so first off, just kind of looking at the UI code, uh, this is Swift UI um, and you know, getting uh, Sinbird into the combined world unlocks a lot of these, these newer uh, UI frameworks. So now we can use Swift UI more easily uh, using published properties. Uh, we can dig into that into the, in the view model here in a second, but um, getting into that combined world gives us this, uh, yeah, just, just new way of, of interacting with, with Sinbird. Um, so very simple UI, we have a list here. Um, that list has, goes, looks at the view models uh, data object of, of channels, an array of channels um, to determine how many rows to show. Uh, and for each row, it gives the channel name to the, to the row view and the last message, which is pulled from the view model, as well as the is typing indicator. So with whether the user is typing or, or isn't typing. Uh, and then just kind of quickly digging into the channel row, it's nothing that special, just Swift UI uh, showing that, that data that was passed in. Um, so if there's a typing indicator, then it shows the assistant ellipses image uh, and animates it. So you get that kind of pulse effect. Um, yeah, so then once you once you get into the, the view model, now you're, you're getting into the, the meat of the application. Um, this is, of course, the view model is an observed object so that the published properties that we're updating with Sinbird Combine are getting reflected, are, are updating the UI, the Swift UI uh, list. Um, yeah, so if we dig into the view model a bit, um, we can see it provides some published properties. So just a little reminder, um, if people haven't worked with Swift UI before, if you have an observable object uh, on your hanging off your view and that object has published variables, these, these um, app published uh, property wrapper uh, variables, they, when they are updated, just when you set a value on them or, or change the value of them, the, that change is propagated up to the, to the view and, and updates and you get the, the nice declarative behavior of Swift UI where uh, your data changes and then your view immediately updates to reflect that data change. Uh, so here we have the data we want to show in that view, the channels, the array of channels, the, just an association of, of the channel URL to the last message we wanna show uh, underneath the, the main channel name. And then this is typing indicator. So another association dictionary of a channel URL and, and a bool property of whether we're typing or not. Um, and then a, a user too, just in case we want that information. It's not currently used in the example. Um, yeah, so one, one thing you, you wanna, or you're allowed to do now with, with combine and this declarative approach is to kind of set up your bindings ahead of time. Uh, and then the data changes just automatically um, perform those, those actions. And so this is kind of a complicated uh, combine uh, chain, but I'll, I'll try to kind of go through it and, and break it down. Um, but essentially every time the channels change, every time we get a new one or remove one, what we wanna do is uh, get these events that are coming from each channel and put those all together, mer merge those all together in one big stream where we can update these last message properties and the this is typing indicator. So this is a, a kind of complicated chunk of code, but accomplishes a really cool thing of, of getting these rows, making sure that as soon as somebody types that the right row toggles uh, the typing indicator, et cetera. So here it's taking the channels that that we're um, that we have on the, on the observed object. It's mapping the result of the channel. So now at this point we have the array of channels, um, and for each of those channels, it's grabbing the event publisher. And this is a kind of cool feature of Sinbird Combine is we've taken the the delegate callback um, approach and added it as a publisher on each individual channel. So for a given channel instance, you can get the event publisher for that channel. And the events you get are, uh, let me just show you the code real quick, please. Sorry. 
um, the events you get are specific to that channel and very actionable. So you get you know, a received message event, an updated message event, deleted, et cetera. You know, all of these events you can get through individual delegate callbacks are put into this one event publisher that you can then subscribe to. And if you, know, if you just want a typing indicator, you can subscribe and filter the, the channel event down to just is typing. Um, and now you have a publisher that, that deals in the typing indicator for a given channel and in real time. And so that's what we're doing here to gather up all of these events and uh, assign and make sure that, that we're updating this local data of the last message with the last message received on the channel. Um, or if the event is a typing status updated, then we're updating the typing uh, status association uh, with the is typing property for the channel. So all of that just to make sure that our data is up to date all the time. You know, we're getting all these events from Sinbird and we just want to make that make sure that these publishers are have the are the source of truth for for the UI. Um, so that's one really powerful thing that, that Sinbird allows us to do. Or Sinbird and Sinbird combined. Um, so here just is a basic load channels. You know, we want to load all of the all of the channels when you come into this view. Um, and this is another kind of cool thing that we can get with, with Sinbird Combine is basically connecting if necessary, you know, so, so we have this connect uh, with, a, with a closure uh, on the Sinbird API um, completion block. And, you know, we want to only load the channels after that completes, um, but we also don't want to reconnect every, every single time. Uh, but by having a connect if necessary that we can then flat map the actual load of the, the channel list, um, we can kind of use the power of, of combine to uh, very easily always make sure we're connected and we're never reconnecting when we, when we don't need to reconnect. Um, and so all this is doing is getting that, loading the, the query, uh, it's ignoring errors. So if there's an error, it just, it just um, returns back an empty array of channels. And then it's assigning it to the channels property, the published var uh, we have on our observable object. So really concise code that every time you know we load channels, we we get the channels and then we we assign them to the uh, publisher, the published property. Another example where you know that button on the top right creates a channel, and so this is a, an example where we do a similar kind of connect if necessary. Then we flat map the create channel publisher uh, that's part of Sinbird Combine. Um, and based on the success or failure of that, of that call, we can insert a, the new channel into the channels array. Um, yeah, similarly, leaving channels, you know, being able to, to remove a channel. Uh, there's a little bit of com complexity here because we want to. You know, you might be able to remove multiple channels at a time, and what if one of them fails, one of them succeeds? But that's complexity that Combine really helps manage um, in, a, in a declarative way. Don't have to go into that in too detail, but uh, yeah, and then here's the connect if necessary. So this is kind of uh, driving those, uh, those operations. Um, basically, if we have a current user, then uh, just return it. Um, immediately. If we don't have a current user, then go through the connection process, uh, which results in a publisher uh, that produces the current user. So yeah, all of those pieces together um, really, you know, make a really like the Simber Combine wrapper really allows us to hook into these new declarative, you know, create bindings up front. Uh, approaches and architectures um, that are, you know, that work really well with Swift UI. Um, so it's a, it's a really good um, way to get some of that uh, kind of new uh, architecture uh, with with some existing frameworks like like Swift like Cinder. Um, and all of this, of course, can work with UIKit as well. There are definitely some some great uses, great ways to use Combine with UIKit. Um, the assign operator, you know, being able to upfront in your 
uh, initialization for your view controller, assign you know a label property, uh, you know a label text property, uh, bind it to the output of, for instance, you know the unread count of of a channel, um, and being able to kind of make that association up front, and then every time the unread count changes, it's automatically assigning that text property to the um, to the label and, and your UI is constantly uh, up to date and in real time. Cool, yeah, I think that's that's kind of it from, from a quick overview of, of the example. Definitely feel free to try it out. If you do like a pod try, Sinbird combine, you can, you can get this example. Uh, we just did a release for 1.1 um, dot o, which, which includes this new example. Give it a try, play around with it, maybe even try to implement some, maybe an unread uh, status indicator on each row, that kind of thing. Is, it should be a lot um, easier in the Swift UI world to, to do with, with Sinbird combined. Zach, actually, could you show us the uh, pod try? Because um, I tried it yesterday and uh, I kind of mistakenly tried it inside a working. Um, folder instead of like creating a whole new folder for it to, to pull it down to? Um, yeah, sure. Um, let me see if I can uh, do this. Yeah, so once you've, um, I think anywhere you, you do it, it will, it might take a while depending on on some caching because there, there are some, uh, sometimes CocoaPods needs to update some main repo and, and it can take a while. Um, but it'll put this, it'll take the example, um, or it'll pull down the, the CocoaPod in a temporary directory somewhere um, and open up the example that's, that's on the top level of the, of the um, CocoaPod. Uh, but it might take a second. <laughs> and, when, um, and when it opens up like a, an instance of Xcode in the project, um, so you can, someone can go in there and they can tweak the existing code and still continue to run it. Um, but uh, the the folder that's created for the try, it's um, uh, is it stored in a hidden temporary folder, or is it right where where you run this pod try command? I think it's a temporary folder, but I'm I'm actually not not sure. Okay, I guess I could just open up terminal and do a pwd to find out where it's at. Um, okay. Okay, so yeah, here you saw it. Um, let me switch back to that. So it it installed the Sinbird combine. Um, CocoaPod, which then as a dependency of the of our CocoaPod, uh, the Sinbird SDK is, is part of that uh, that uh, our, our parent uh, spec. Um, and so, yeah, and then it just opens this, and yeah, it is in this very uh, temporary place. So yeah, don't if you make a lot of really cool changes, make sure that they're they're saved somewhere else, <laughs> and submit a pull request because we'd love to love to have them. Nice, cool. Okay, so I did post a link to the uh, the Git GitHub repo for a single combine. Um, so, like you said, if if somebody wants to add to it, they can they can you know pull down a, a correct clone instance, add their code, and then do a pull request for it. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, we're we're trying to keep up if there are API changes, uh, APIs added um, that could could use some some nice wrappers or some combine wrappers. Uh, on the Sinbird side. Um, so yeah, if you, if you notice something missing, then yeah, please let us know. Nice. Uh, do you guys have, I think I know the answer for this, but um, are there any any plans for Sinbird combined, uh, you know, other than, you know, maintenance and upkeep? Um, uh, I guess my question is, are there any, like, are there any features you can think of that, that, that are missing or that, uh, that could be added? Yeah, I mean the we do also have a, a sub spec uh, in the repo for calls also to, to integrate with some of the, the APIs around around Sinbird calls. Um, but I think you know if there are some use cases there that we could definitely expand to and, and make sure that are covered. Um, but for the most part, I, I feel like we've got a very good coverage of, of the APIs out there right now. Um, but yeah, there, there are definitely um, interesting, um, you know, kind of meta APIs that, that could, we could add that perform a series of steps that often have to be performed. Um, you know, even, even something like the connect if necessary could be something that exists in Sinbird Combine 
uh, it provides you know some little helpers and wrappers to um, to using uh, Simbird in your app uh, without necessarily um, you know needing to to handle all the errors in, in the right way. Nice, cool. Okay, uh, we're closing up on the uh, the half hour mark. Uh, which is great, great timing, Zach. Uh, so I'm going to open it up for anyone who might have any questions for for the for the team or us. If not, that's okay as well too. I know we do. Some people did put some uh, some questions uh, up on the registration form. Yes. Yeah, so, so this is uh, we have a dependency on iOS 13 for doing combine, right? So a lot of us are kind of hanging out with supporting iOS 12. So that's something to consider. Because um, there's really a question. But the question I really have is, what's the maintenance plan? What's the uh, kind of the responsibility for keeping this up to date, keeping it in sync with Sendbird base updates? Um, what's the plan for that? And how do we build confidence that we should jump to using this? Great question. And definitely a good call out that the iOS 13 is the, the uh, you know, limit. Uh, you, you do need to support 13 plus only um, with Combine. Um, yeah, and, and going forward, I mean, one, one good thing about kind of how this particular um, SDK is set up is, you know, it, it just wraps what it wraps and anything that it doesn't wrap is still available, you know. So if there is an API that uh, gets added that has a completion handler, um, and uh, you know you've pulled that that version into your project, uh, you can still use that um, alongside the kind of old version of of Simbird combined. Uh, it's just you won't you'd have to write your own wrapper if, if you wanted to to use that in the publisher uh, world. So you know all of the APIs are are still there. It's just now there are variants of them that are that are based on publishers or that, that produce publishers. Um, and you know, this is kind of the pattern that, that Apple takes to. I mean, there are tons of APIs uh, in, in UIKit and in and, um, and the, the Cocoa APIs that uh, you know have completion handlers and in a couple of key cases, there, you know, key use cases, they've added these publishers, publish publisher versions of them. Um, and so you can still use the, the old ones, but but now there are kind of new APIs that you can use um, to, to get that, get into the combined, combined world. Cool, excellent. Okay, uh, so if there are no more questions, uh, I mean, if you do have follow-up questions, by all means, oh, uh, I think we got a question by Vikram. Uh, this is a question regarding the product itself more so than a development question. How does a company whose product is not focused on chat make sure that they do not incur excessive costs for excessive MAU that haven't even sent a single message? Okay, so if I understand this question correctly, then um, what you're looking to, what you're basically asking, um, and Vikram, feel free to jump in um, for clarification here, is uh, how to not be charged for high MAU usage when you don't even have any MAUs currently. Is that correct? Exactly. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, right. So if someone on my team is really good with pricing, uh, they could maybe give you a, a better answer, but, uh, at least for Sembird's pricing model, right. Is based on, uh, a monthly active user limit. Right. So I believe whether you're using, whether you're active or not, um, uh, I believe you're still being charged, but I uh, mean, definitely, reach out to us and we'll, we'll work out. So if you know, like you've got a certain time period where you're like not even using the service, you know, we'll work with you. So, you know, definitely reach out to us and we'll, we'll figure out something that works best for you. Um, right. Does that, uh, does that help? I hope it's kind of a deferred, deferred answer. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. We'll take that offline then. Okay, uh, if, there are, if there are additional questions, you can feel free, of course, to reach out to us. Uh, everyone should have our contact info. I will also post um, the LinkedIn info for David and uh, Zach, um, which uh, actually we might send that in the email since uh, I have gone and displaced your guys' LinkedIn info for the moment. Uh, 
But I'd like to say uh, while we're closing that we do have another Code Cafe at the end of this month. It is with our own Alex Orr, and he will be talking about moderation features available in Sendbird and all the uh, individual elements that you can employ to kind of manage really complex conversations. So I'll post a, a link here if you want additional information on that Code Cafe. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you everyone for showing up. Um, Zach, was there any last comments that you wanted to, to let everyone know about? Uh, no, yeah, you can check out what, what Velis is doing at velismobile.com. Uh, we're, we're hiring too, hiring iOS, Android designers. So um, yeah, definitely reach out uh, to me, Zach at velismobile.com, Z-A-C, um, if, uh, yeah, if you have any questions or, or are interested. Cool. Awesome. And thank you, Jess. Yes, we, we have recorded this event, so it'll go out and we'll send up a follow-up email with additional info. All right. Thank you much, uh, everyone. Uh, have a great morning and a great rest of your week.